Greg. It's a pleasure to be here. I have 10 minutes to tell you everything I know, so I'm going to run out of something to say. I know that. But they, they asked me to spend a few minutes with you uh, talking a little bit about leadership. You know, I spent 32 years in coaching, high school, junior college, college, and pro. And over 20 of them were as a head coach, 15 of them in the NFL. And, you know, I, I learned a lot. And I really learned more from my players than I did from anybody else. What helped them be the best they can be? But that, because when you're in a leadership position, that's your responsibility to help your people, to help your family be the best they can be. And then let the results of the game take care of itself because they're all trying to be the best they can be. I call them seven common sense principles of leadership. I developed these. They're on the back of a card. I left a whole bunch of them in the back if you want them when I leave. The number one principle to me is the foundation of being a good leader, a good parent, a good teacher, is make sure everybody knows you care. I used to say players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Your employees, your fellow workers don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Very few people give their best to the people they like the least. Common sense tells you that, right? But I'll tell you this, it's amazing how many times I've seen people screw that up, including myself, as I grew and matu matured and learned how to better communicate, work, and connect with people. Make sure they know you care. Number two, be a good example. Your team, your kids, your organization will not be, will not be what you are not. They will not be what you are not. They, you've got to be a great example in everything, and how you handle adversity, how you handle fam family values, how you handle work, how motivated you are. Do you come to work intending to win? Do you come to work trying to get better? As a leader, never assume you're not being evaluated. It's a big mistake. I found that over the years. Kids, my players, were constantly evaluating how I did things. They will not be what you are not. That's all there is to it. And you've got to be a good example. And it's so important for your kids, your teammates, the, the Marshall Falks that I was fortunate enough to coach, to see great examples around them, following the right people. The other little thing was I put here, create an atmosphere in which people enjoy working. I feel that's done here by your leadership, Greg and John. You know, you know it, it is so important. It is so important to enjoy driving into the parking lot and getting out of the car and ready to go to work. It is so important to look forward to going in an office and be with the people that care about you because you care about them. It's, it's so important, especially like in the National Football League. 32 teams trying to be number one. That's all, 32 teams. A lot of us have complicated it. I have from time to time in my career. But as I learned to make sure, regardless of how we're gonna work them and everything, else, that people enjoy being in the facility. And they enjoy it, number one, because you care about them, and number two, because you're a good example of self. Number four, define why they're coming in the office. Define, delegate, then lead. You know, how are you gonna know where you're going when you get there if it isn't defined in a plan? I was just instructed, Greg told me about, boy, the, the end of the year is critical for you people because everyone comes on the last part of the year, gets after you and really puts the pressure on you. Well, I, I promise you, you have a defined plan to how to get it done. It won't be an impromptu. It'll be a defined plan how you get it done because you've done it before and you will find a way to do it better. By delegating responsibilities to people that can do it maybe better than you did. See, I left coaching here, 1982, walked off out of coaching because I could not delegate properly. I was so insecure myself, I felt I had to do it all myself. I had to make every decision. So to do that, because I was also in charge of personnel and everything else, the general manager of those people, I had full control. So you stay up all night because you wouldn't ask somebody else to do it. Dumb, okay, dumb. I learned that, yeah. I, I, I qualified. But anyway, I learned a lot from it. So when I went back, I did the same thing. I defined things, but I learned to delegate. Delegate is not a sign of laziness. It's a sign of self-confidence. It's, it's a sign that you trust people. And boy, when you trust the right people, it's amazing how much better you get. The other thing is bring energy. 
Number five, bring energy to the workplace. Come to work. You know, hard work is not a form of punishment. There are people that think it is, really. It's especially in the football world. Marshall Falk. Boy, I'll tell you, when he first came with us, he said, oh, he was disappointed he got traded to the Rams because we practiced against them when he was at the Colts. And when they, we'd finish our team practices, they would go in, and I'd keep my team out and practice some more. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm going to the Rams where they do that. But he found out what that kind of work does for you. You get better. There's no way you get better by working less. No way. Not possible. Bring energy. You always did have a way with women. Get the hell out of my car, old man. You want to marry that girl?